Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today it's all about the hurricane vacuum system, and today we're going to do a video installing all the piping. And this is this video is for obviously for entertainment purposes only. Um, the unit is really heavy. I lifted it over there by myself, but I would not recommend that. If you're going to do it, make sure you get a friend to help you. Anyway, yeah, let's get started. We'll pipe this thing and uh, get this thing hooked up. Okay, right off the bat, don't do what I just did. I, I basically muscled this thing over and set it in place by myself, and it's, it's really way too heavy. Right here, I, I, I basically measured between the, the holes on the table and came up with this dimension for gluing, gluing all these 3 by 2 combis together. And although it worked, it, it worked fine, my goal was to have a really free-flowing system. So instead of using santees, I used combis because it, it just seemed like the air would flow real nice. And right here, I, I get them all glued together and straightened out and right on the measurement that I was originally looking for. Now, my idea was to put these right in the middle of that um, vac or the, the vacuum, uh, the hurricane vacuum pump. But... As you'll see after I get these glued in, they, now right here I'm gluing all the valves in, and um, yeah, that it's the plumbing. This system is really easy actually. Um, you just kind of want to keep them all level and straight, and not let any glue get into the actual the valve itself. You don't want glue to. You want to just put enough on to get in there, but not not enough glue to squirt up into the valve. And I basically just line all these up, get them nice and straight, so that when I bring them over to the vacuum table, it, they'll be easy to access. And right here, right here, I'm using, I'm not using any glue, I'm just using Teflon tape. And then um, originally I had thought that the, this filter, which glues onto this 90, I, I originally thought it could be straight up and down. So you'll see right here, I actually, you know, leveled it all straight up and down. And that's where I was originally going to put the, the canister. And then here I tap on tape and, and, you know, get the male adapters on there for the canister and get it ready to plug in. But I, I, I realized right away that it couldn't go up straight up and down because the valves could not be on top of the, the, um, the big vacuum motor, the Hurricane vacuum pump. And you'll see right here, I, I realized right away they wouldn't fit. So the, the valves and everything had to be behind the vacuum pump, which in retrospect is really the best place to put it because you want to be able to pull the vacuum pump out of there without damaging all your piping and everything. So right here, you'll see I had the vacuum um, all the fittings behind the vacuum pump and it just means you got to reach under there to pull the valves but it's not that bad and right here I'm, I'm getting now all these pieces are going to be the pieces that go up through the bottom of the vacuum table and I'm using some two-part epoxy and I basically just do a couple of you know do one at a time and mix it up and then go underneath the table and and push these up through that table. Once, once those are done, I, I get ready and I, um, I get ready to glue. Now, my goal was to have the least amount of fittings as possible. So you can see I've got three by two commies going up to the valves and then I got a 90 and a 90 and that's it. And that's basically for all, all four zones. That's all there is. There's a, a you know, it's about the least amount of 90s you could possibly have in this system. Um, so the, the idea with that is that the flow of air would have the least restriction in this system. And right here, so those are the first two zones. And then, so I only have four zones and I think it's gonna work really well for, for my particular, what I usually do. And um, the main reason, like, here I'm underneath, uh, you know, of course I hate working under these. It reminds me of when I did, when I used to do plumbing all the time and 
you're crawling through attics and but there's the 90 you know going to the pump so you you know the flow is really nice it's not too many bends it's about the the least amount of bends for the system and here you can see it all hooked up and yeah it turned out good okay i got all the electrical hooked up the whole machine the piping's all done i opened all the valves for now and we're going to turn it on for the first time and see how it works now over here you got you got a primary and a secondary so we'll turn on the primary see which ones those are <laughs> that doesn't matter so whether you hit the primary or the secondary it's flowing through through your whole manifold so if you have all the pipes open um, it's gonna flow through them all but let's turn them on let's turn both of them on and we'll see what kind of suction we got <laughs> Suction is really good. Um, the true test is going to be to see if it'll suck down a piece of material on top of this. So I'm going to um, I'm going to get this vacuum out of the way, and we're going to put in a piece of MDF because the next piece needs to get surfaced before it flips over and gets glued to this. So I kind of hate to glue anything to this, but that's the way it's got to be. So the we're going to go ahead and put a piece of MDF on here. And see if it sucks down and, and uh, but everything actually I'm pretty happy with the black box it comes full it comes pretty much assembled you know except for you have to do your own piping and uh, as you saw in the video it's not that hard to do the one thing that like I was showing in the video when I was doing the piping originally I wanted to have these valves out here um, but because I use three by two commies instead of Santis it raised these valves up higher than it and I didn't have enough room to put them in there so if you're if you're installing this on a Abbott CNC and you want it to be on top of here although maybe it's better to be behind it because if you ever have to work on on uh, get this out it'll be easier to get it out and I think eventually what I'll do is I'll cut this right here and put a fur code right there so I can just disassemble it and pull this whole uh, vacuum system out Anyway, uh, let's get a piece of MDF and, and uh, finish up this project. Okay, time to test it out and see if it works. Thanks for watching this episode of Outlaw Woodworking. Please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Later. He goes, it's a working man. He's trying to make a living any way he can. And he'll break his back for a buck or two. Oh, there ain't no shame in what he do.